exploring annealing back bends to create a camel shape. Namaste everyone. Welcome to another episode of On The Match. And this week will be another episode where I put myself on the match, the theme of camel back bends. So a few weeks ago, while we were exploring the front splits, I took the time to explain how inflexible I was when I started my yoga journey. So when I started, I could not reach my toes in a forward bend. And this also carried forward to my back bend practice as well. I was not able to do a wheel pose and was as stiff as a piece of wood. So imagine my beautiful, beautiful surprise and astonishment that after just a few years of consistent practice, I began to become proficient in poses that I never thought I would be able to accomplish. One of these poses then is the camel pose or Ustrasana, which is what we are going to explore this week. So feel free also to incorporate a short warming session at the start and a nice long Shavasana at the end to take this 45 minute sequence into a 60 minute practice. So let's begin. So begin your practice from a child's pose position with your feet and knees together and with the hips rested over the ankles of the feet. Keep the spine long and guide the head down resting on the mat in front of you. Arms down the length of the body and for now palms facing upwards. Feel free to modify this pose by resting your head on a block if that feels more comfortable. And working with the breath now, on the inhale, start to lift the upper body and the arms as well, finding a retraction movement in the scapular and the strength of the upper back. Exhale then, drop the head back down, gently resting. Inhale, again rise up, open the chest and lift the arms like the arms of an aeroplane. Exhale slowly, head comes down, arms come down. Again with the breath, inhale. Use the inhalation to create broadness in the chest. Exhale and gently pull navel inwards towards your spine as you allow the body to rest. Now with the next inhale, deepen your movement. Start to lift up to a kneeling pose with the arms extending back and down as the heart lifts forwards and upwards. Exhale gently, it comes down. Good. And let's try again. Inhale. Start to feel your strong back muscles awaken to find the lift of the heart. Exhale. And the body coming back down to the mat again. And then from child's pose, inhale, rise up for five, four, three, two, and one. Exhale, coming down. One, two, three, four, and five. Please lift the arms up overhead, open the chest, open the shoulders, and exhale, sweep the arms back behind you, keeping the arms lifted. Find movement in the shoulders now, inhale, rise up and open the chest, exhale, come down and bring the arms back and upwards. Last one, inhale with your deepest, longest breath, beautiful, exhale, come down. Okay, now interlace the hands together behind the body, clasping the hands, inhale. Hold this pose, trying to bring the heart forwards and upwards as you bring shoulders backwards and the arms lengthening downwards towards the mat. Stay with the breath and even start to lift the chin, opening the throat. Ensure that you maintain a healthy length of the neck and without collapsing into the back of the head. Exhale then. Sasang Asana Rabbit Pose. Tuck the chin to the chest and gently lift up the hips as you guide the crown of the head down to rest gently on the mat. In this gentle inversion, you are working to move the arms as far away from the body as you can while keeping the hands clasped. If you can, press the palms together, otherwise keep them open and release. Gently come back down. Child's Pose. From Child's Pose, rock the body forwards now to tabletop, arriving at the hands and knees position, and then continuing to work with the breath. Inhale, arch your spine. Exhale, return to child's pose position. Inhale, rock forward and arching the body again, looking up 
as you lift your tailbone. Exhale and then keep the length of the spine as you come back down. Inhale, remember the movement of the shoulders going back and down as the chest comes forward through the gateway of the arms and exhale lower. Good. Now with the next inhalation, find the biggest movement, start to even incorporate the lift of the tailbone. And then with the exhale, curling the toes under the feet, lifting the knees off the mat, bringing the hips as far away from the hands as we can, guiding the body to downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. And here we are, paddling out the feet, left and right, heels and toes. When you're ready, come up and tiptoes, inhalation. And with the exhale, we guide the heels down to the mat. Now exhale, step the right foot forwards in front of you. Inhale as you rise up, lengthen the arms and create that stretching of the front body. As you exhale, guide the hips down a little bit deeper into the expression of Anjani Asana, low lunge pose. Hugging the outer hips in, creating firmness between the inner legs to maintain stability of your pelvic joints. As you exhale, place the hands down to the mat. And inhale, take the right foot back and downward facing dog. Exhale, now step your left foot forwards. And lowering the right knee down gently, take a breath in. Arms extend upwards to open the chest and shoulders and a lifted gaze. Exhale, allowing the hips to sink as low as they can go, creating that beautiful stretch in the back of the front leg and the front of the back leg. Staying stable with the inner leg engagement also means that you are maintaining a beautiful lift in your pelvic floor. Next exhale, palms come down to the mat and the back foot stepping forwards to the front. Inhale, halfway lift, look up as you lift the body high enough to create a flat back. Exhale and then forward bending, guiding the crown of the head towards your big toes and you might be bending the knees slightly to maintain a beautiful length of your spine. Again, we are creating more length with every inhalation and finding the depth of our stretch with every exhalation. Next inhale, halfway lifting again. And on the exhale, Stepping the left foot back, left knee down, arms up to open chest and shoulders. Good, exhale, place hands down and step back your feet this time, downward facing dog. From downward dog, inhale, step your left foot forwards and find a low lunge pose. As you exhale, step both feet forwards to the front and do a forward bend. Inhale, the halfway lift, looking upwards. Exhale, now step the right foot back with the right knee downwards. Working with the breath, inhale, low lunge, connect these movements with your breathing. Exhale, step back, downward facing dog. From down dog, inhale, step the right foot forward and arms lift to open up. Exhale, as you return the hands down, back foot stepping forwards to the front. Inhale, a halfway lift. Exhale, forward bend. Now rise up to standing, giving the arms a big, beautiful stretching upwards. And exhale, come back down to the mat. Inhale, look up in the halfway lift. Again, step your left foot back, left knee down. Inhale, low lunge pose. Exhale, step back your feet. Now come to a plank pose position. Lower knees down, keep your hips high, elbows bent to lower chest down, chin forward. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, down dog pose. Inhale, step the left foot forwards, low lunge pose. Exhale, stepping both feet forwards, forward bend. Inhale, halfway lift, look up. Exhale, deepen the forward bend. And next, inhale, rise up again. Open chest, open shoulders. Exhale, it comes down. Inhale, halfway lift, look upwards. Exhale, step your right foot back, right knee down. Inhale, low lunge pose. Good. Exhale, step back again from plank. Take your option of a chaturanga. A low push up followed by an upward facing dog. And finishing with down dog with a straight spine. 
Inhale, step the right foot forward, so low lunge pose. Good. Exhale, step both feet forwards, forward bend. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale with length. Inhale, rising up to standing. And exhale, we come back down. Beautiful. With the breath now. Inhale, look up, lengthening. Exhale, step your left foot back, left knee down. So from your low lunge pose on the inhalation, this time, bring the right hand down to the mat next to your hip and extend the left arm up and over, side stretching to the right. And stay in this pose and work with your breath. And please maintain the alignment of low lunge in the lower part of the body. On the exhale, bring the left hand down to the back leg. Crawl it as far back as you can and then extend the right arm upwards. And this is a different kind of side bend with a little twist and a back bend as well. A little bit like a reverse warrior pose. On the exhale with both hands down. Now counter stretch by pulling the hips back and straightening the front leg. And with the inhale, look up. Exhale, folding. Good, and stay with the breath as we hold. Keep the movement of pulling the right hip back, even as you guide the crown of the head towards your big toe. Good, now bending the front knee, and curling the back toes under. Extend your right foot up and over in a three-legged dog variation. In this variation, you are swinging the foot like a pendulum and opening the hip. Allow that beautiful movement to create length in front and side of your body. And take the option if you wish, you are going to lift the right hand off the mat, touching the right toes down very gently behind you, flipping the body over, finding the height of the hips and open chest and shoulders in Wow Thing Pose, Kamat Karasana. Reaching the mat with the right hand as best as you can. Exhale, flip it back, plank pose position and bend your elbows to do another vinyasa. Remember, vinyasa can be a knees, chest, chin. Does not have to be a chaturanga. You can level the practice according to the intensity your body needs. Inhale, come up and tiptoes. Exhale, knees to chest and looking forwards. Next inhale, come to the front in a halfway lift. Exhale to forward bend. Good. Inhale, arms up from a standing position to create length. Exhale, bring the hands back down. Forward bending again. Inhale, halfway lift, look upwards. Exhale, now step your right foot back. And right knee comes down gently. Find your low lunge pose. Inhale, arms upwards. Good. And next exhale, we will place the left hand down to the mat. Side stretching to the left. Inhale, extend the right arm. Keep the arm fully extended. Even you try bringing the bicep closer towards the right ear. Expanding as much the right side of the body without collapsing or compressing into the left. Use the inhalation to create more length in the right side. Good. Now exhale as you bring the right hand touching the back leg behind you and lifting the left arm up and over in an alternate side stretch. Stay with the breath. And remember to maintain the alignment of a low lunge in the lower part of the body even as you explore these upper body movements. And that'll do on the exhale with the hands down. You straighten the front leg in a halfway lift, looking up on the inhalation and forward bending on the exhale. Stay with the breath. Five, four, three, Two, and one, that'll do. Bend the front knee, curl the back toes under, inhale, extend the left foot up, swing the foot over to the right. And stay with the breath to create length in the front and sides of the body. If you feel strong, if it feels right for you, slowly, slowly, lift the left hand off the mat and allow that left foot to drop down, landing very lightly on the mat behind you. With the inhale, open the hip, lift it up high, Find movement in the chest and upper body. Extend your left hand. You are trying to reach the front of the mat. 
Kamatkarasana, Wild Thing Pose. Good, and then with the next breath, flip it back to Plank Pose position, and if you wish, a Vinyasa. Otherwise, just arrive directly at Downward Facing Dog, that is perfectly fine as well. From downward facing dog, coming up and tiptoes, inhale. Knees to the chest, looking forwards, exhale. Next inhale, stepping to the front. And exhale, forward bending. Inhale, rise up to standing. Circle your arms back behind you this time, so that you again clasp your hands together, interlacing the fingers behind the body. Inhale, open chest. Bring shoulders down away from the ears. Exhale, step your left foot back and keeping both legs straight and the hips squared towards the front of the mat. Inhale. Begin to gently explore a back bend from this position, allowing the arms to go back and down as you find the lift of the chest and maybe lifting the chin. Exhale, gently guide the crown of the head down towards the big toe in a hamstring stretching of the right leg. Pyramid pose or Parsvottanasana. Here you continue the work of moving the arms further away from the hips to deepen the stretching of your shoulders. Stay for five, four, three, two, and one. Inhale like a halfway lift as you gently now start to balance on the right foot. Left leg starts to float off the mat, hands unclasped, arms like an aeroplane. Beautiful broad chest, draw the shoulder blades together behind you, create length from the crown of the head to the back heel. You are in a warrior three variation. And then from here, make your transition to a dancer pose using the left hand to clasp the ankle of the foot from the inside, keeping the shoulder open, lifting the right arm up and the body is vertical. Keep knees together, hips and shoulders squared towards the front, and then with a strong kick of that left leg, allow that left leg to lift without lifting your left hip, without too much shortening of the left side of the body. And continue with the breath as you explore the height of that left leg, bringing the chest downwards to counterbalance, but extending right arm and lifting the right shoulder. Inhale, rise up. Exhale with the hands down to the mats. Take a small hop back with your leg and work your vinyasa to downward facing dog. Okay. From down dog pose, come up and tiptoes. Exhale, knees to chest, looking forwards. Inhale, left foot, right foot. Step to the front. Exhale, then forward bend, coming all the way down. Now rise up to standing, inhale, lift the arms up, and, and again circle the arms back with the exhalation. So that you clasp the hands together behind the body, interlacing the fingers. Take one breath to open the chest and shoulders with the inhale. Exhale, left foot steps back. Oops, exhale, right foot steps back. Keeping the hips squared, keeping the heels grounding, inhale, explore, gentle standing back bend from this position. Find length in the lower back by dropping your tailbone down as best as you can, even as you work on upper body movement. Good. And then on the exhale, folding, guiding the crown of the head as close towards your left big toe as you can as you work on moving your clasped hands as far away from the hips as possible, noticing how breath by breath and throughout your practice you are deepening the stretching of the shoulders. Good, in this way we prep for our beautiful camel pose back bends. And then when you're ready, gently release, come to a halfway lift, unclasp the hands, keep the arms lifted like the arms of an aeroplane. Find your balance in the four corners of the left foot. You might micro bend that left knee in order to maintain if your hamstrings feel tight. Find a lift of the chest. Good. Drawing the shoulder blades together behind you as you lift the arms. Create length from the back heel to the crown of the head. 
And then inhale, rise up to make your transition. The right hand, palm facing up, is going to hold the inside of the foot. And inhale, left arm upwards. Exhale, start to kick the right foot back. This allows the right leg to lift. Ensure that as you lift the right leg, you are not lifting the right hip. You are not shortening the right side of the body. Beautiful openness in that right shoulder as you allow the chest to come down to counterbalance and the lift of that left shoulder so that you have a beautiful active posterior chain. Stay for one more breath. And then as you release, inhale rising upwards. Exhale, whoops, gently guide the hands down to the mat. Take a small hop back to plank with the elbows bent, coming down, Chaturanga or knees, chest, chin, followed by an up dog or a cobra, and arriving a downward facing dog. Inhale, come up and tiptoes. Exhale, knees to chest, look forwards next. Inhale, perhaps you hop, but please land lightly. Exhale, fold. And with the next inhale, rising up, standing position, arms lengthening upwards towards the sky. Exhale with the hands to the hips, and we turn to face the side of our mat. And from here, circling the arms back again, clasping, interlacing fingers behind the body. Inhale, look upwards. Exhale, start to bend your right knee, keeping the knee stacked above the ankle of the foot, pointing the toes to the right side. Humble warrior position as you guide the crown of the head down. Maintain the alignment of the legs and take the arms away from the body. Next breath as you rise up, switch the legs. Exhale, bow down towards your left foot. Arms moving away from the body. Inhale as you rise up, switch the legs. Exhale, bow down to the right. Good. Stay with your breath now as we work to open the hips and open the shoulders. Strengthening the legs, working the back muscles. As you breathe, so we move. Inhale, rising up to switch the legs. And exhale, coming down to the opposite side. Good, let's do one more. And this time, both legs straight on the inhale. Point your toes forwards. Exhale, come down to the wide-legged stretch. Prasarita Parutanasana. Do the variation where you still have your hands clasping together. If the shoulders feel open enough, even the palms joining. As you guide the crown of the head as close to the mat as you can, you are using gravity to move the arms away from the hips and towards the mat in front of you. Finding the deepest, juiciest stretch in your shoulders. Good, and now let's stretch the shoulders in an alternate way. Placing the forearms down to the mat, inhale. From your halfway lift position, crawl the fingertips as far forwards as you can. As you lengthen the fingers forward, you guide the tailbone back in the opposite direction. You pull yourself out to a beautiful length while maintaining the stable foundation of the legs. And then when you're ready, begin to twist your body by threading the right arm under and to the left, clasping the opposite ankle. Then with the left arm, start to walk to the opposite corner, staying here or if you can reach. Then hold the ankles with both your hands and work to twist your body. This creates a beautiful stretching of both your shoulders as well as a lengthening of the left side of your body and a beautiful opening of your hips. Exhale as you release. Again, crawl the hands forwards and find length. And then when you're ready to twist again, now thread your left arm under and reach for the right ankle. Now walk the right arm over towards the left ankle. And it doesn't mean that if you are not able to reach the ankle today, then you are not gaining the benefits of this stretch. You can just leave the right hand on the mat using friction to keep yourself in the twist. 
So find the variation of this beautiful twist that works for your body and stay enjoying the beautiful openness of your shoulders, inner legs and hips, hamstrings and spine. Good, and then let's do just a simple halfway lift from this position. Inhale. And please ensure that there is no feeling of nausea or giddiness all the way up to full standing position. Stepping to the front of the mat. Inhale, arms up, open the chest and shoulders. Exhale, palms to the mat, forward bending. Inhale, halfway lift and looking upwards. Exhale, please walk, jump or float back, doing a vinyasa. Or it could just mean that you arrive directly in downward facing down. Work with the breath. Maintain the length in your spine. Keep the shoulders broad, but with the wrap of the triceps. Find firmness in the palm foundations and in the four corners of the feet. Now inhale, come up and tiptoes. Exhale, knees to chest. Next breath, let's jump through to a seated position on the mat. And keep the legs tucked as you lie flat. Lying face up on the mat. With the arms down the length of the body. Prepare for your bridge pose by checking that you are able to just touch the heels of the feet with the hands. Your feet and knees no wider than the distance of your hips. Now work with the breath to elevate the arms upwards on the inhalation and bring the arms downwards on the exhalation. Connect with the breath, inhale opening chest, lift the arms upwards. Exhale, navel pulling inwards, drops the arms down. Inhale, arms up and lengthening. Exhale, arms down and firming. Good. Next, inhale, begin to work on lifting up your hips as well. Exhale, drop the hips down and the arms lower. Good. Inhale as you lift your hips up. Avoid the knees going too wide apart. Keep the inner leg engagement and strong glute activation here. Exhale, the arms come down and the hips return to the mat. So with the next inhale, lift up your hips and with the arms overhead. Exhale again, the hips come down and arms lowering. As we breathe, so we move. Inhale. Now clasping the hands together. Underneath the body as you walk the shoulders. Underneath the chest. Finding then a firm and stable foundation in shoulders and upper arms. Here, maintaining the height of the hips. As you mobilize the upper body, guiding the heart upwards towards the chin. Maintaining length in your neck. Maintaining foundation in shoulders triceps. Stay for one more breath. And that'll do. Exhale, release, gently coming back down, rested on the mat. As you bring the knees to the chest, clasp the knees with your hands and pull the knees in close in a reclining tuck which will help you release the tension in the lower back from the previous practice. And release. Round two. Take the option if you wish to place the hands on either side of the head. You take this option if you wish to explore wheel pose or Urdhva Dhanurasana. Inhale, hips up. Again, just like bridge, find the height of the hips. Inhabit the hip flexors. Find movement in the chest, opening the heart. And then with the next breath, lift up to the crown of the head. Here you think about pulling the elbows backwards towards the shoulders to draw the shoulder blades together behind the chest. And with the next inhale, now try to fully extend the arms. Coming to Urdhva Dhanurasana and staying here until the expansion feeling becomes a lot more manageable 
and you are able to breathe easily, then explore walking the hands closer towards the feet or walking the feet closer towards the hands to deepen your pose. So here you want to fully extend out the arms and keep the hips as high as possible, finding the expansion into the outward curve. Stay for one more breath. Exhale, lower down to shoulders. And carefully drop the hips down. Again, bring the knees to the chest, holding the knees with the hands. Hug the knees in close, release your lower back. Maybe a gentle side to side rocking motion if that feels nice. Good. And from here, a reclining twist to continue the work of opening up your spine. Either keep your knees together or cross the right leg over the left leg. And bring your legs down to the left. As you do so, spread out your right arm and allow the head to roll to the right as well. So the neck is given an opportunity to participate in this twist. Exhale and twist. Come back and crossing the legs the opposite way. Or again, just keep the knees together. Spreading out the left arm and the head rolls to the left. As you move knees down to the right. So the priority here is the grounding of your shoulder. And release and untwist. Beautiful. With the knees to the chest, do a gentle rocking motion, rock your way up to seated, extend your legs back behind you. And gently arrive in a child's pose position with the arms stretching forwards. Feet and knees together. Resting the hips over the ankles. Resting the head on the mat or perhaps head over forearms if that feels nice. So we are now going to take this practice to Ustrasana or the Camel Pose. But let's work with the breath. First come forwards to a Cobra. Glide the body down from Child's Pose. Inhale, lift the heart. Keep the elbows hugging close as you look upwards. Exhale, pushing back. Child's Pose position. Good. So allow your breath once again to guide the movements in the body. Inhale, Cobra. Exhale, child's pose. The lower you keep the body to the mat, the more intense the movement. Inhale, cobra. Good. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, cobra. We start to lift the hands off the mat and extend your arms back like an aeroplane. Exhale, child's pose position. Again, inhale your cobra pose. And as you reach the arms back, exhale, child's pose. Let's do one more. Inhale from a cobra position. Now lift up as high as that lower back allows you to go. And remember to expand into the outward curve. Exhale, child's pose. One more. Inhale. As you enter cobra, take your option of bending the knees, bringing the heels in towards the hips. Lift up as high as you can, perhaps even up onto the fingertips. Walking the hands back, perhaps closer to the hips. Lifting the chin to open the throat, always maintaining length in the neck. Shoulder blades trying to draw together behind you. And breath by breath, recruit and awaken all the muscles along the length of your back. From the toes to the crown of the head. King Cobra Pose, Raja Bhujangasana. Exhale, 
count to stretch in child's pose. Now you can keep the knees a little bit wider apart to maintain a healthier lengthening in the spine. Inhale now. Come up to a high kneeling position, arms up. Exhale. Back down to child's pose. Good. With the breath, inhale. Rising up to high kneeling position. Avoid the knees going too wide apart. Maintain a maximum hip width distance. Exhale, come down. Try to arrive on the mat with the arms and the head together. Now with the right hand holding the heel, inhale, extend left arm up. You can practice this with the right hand supporting the lower back instead if that feels nicer for the body. Exhale, it comes down. And with the left hand holding the heel, from a child's pose, inhale, sweep the right arm up and over and extend it all the way back. Exhale and release what you're doing. Come all the way back down. Child's pose position. Holding the opposite heel, inhale, rise up. Good. Find bigger and bigger movements in the body. Always supporting this with your breath. Exhale, come down. Inhale. Rise up and extend the right arm. Beautiful. Exhale, it comes down. And again with the breath, but this time, arms go all the way overhead, both arms together, circle the arms back and support the lower back with the hands. This is so the little fingers touching, thumbs outwards, the palms rest on the lower back and then as you inhale, expanding into the outward curve, you push the hips forward to stack them over the knees, using a strong leg engagement here and create space for the lower back, dropping the tailbone downwards. Hug the elbows together behind you to find the beneficial movement of the shoulders that unlocks the upper chest. Staying here or one hand reaching for the heel, both hands reaching for the heel. Coming to the full expression of Ustrasana, camel pose. Continue to find a way of breathing in this position. Inhale, expansion of the chest. Exhale, finding your grounding. Good. Now come up slowly, gently, carefully, as symmetrically as you can, and rest in a white legged child's pose as you do so. Please do it at the front of the mat. Good. We are going up for another camel pose. Camel pose number two, the same, same practice. Choose to support the lower back with the hands or clasping the heels of the feet. Those of us that wish to explore the essential level pose, which is Lagu Vajrasana, the drop back from a camel. Then you might have the hands moving higher up, either at the calves or perhaps even you are able to hold on to the front of your thighs or knees. And keep the back bend as you come all the way down. Manage this with your strong, strong leg engagement. Remembering to hug the knees inwards towards each other to maintain stability. And the head comes down as low, as close to the mat as you can. And as you inhale, rise up the same way we came down. With control to rest on the mat again. Good. And then for the third and final camel pose in today's practice, again, take your option to just do a supported camel or a normal camel. Perhaps you want to try Lagu Vajrasana again, the little thunderbolt, dropping the head down to the mat behind you. But if you wish, in the intermediate level class last week, we practiced dropping back from camel to wheel pose. If that is what you wish to do, prepare by curling the toes underneath the feet. Keep the feet flexed. And then entering camel as per normal. Once you feel ready, you are in the maximum extension of the body. You are going to carefully, carefully bring the hand to the heart to see if it feels nice. Maintaining this posture with the support from the deep core, with the support from your regulated breath. If it feels nice, bring the hands, the hands to the forehead and the arms gently extending all the way back. Good, finding the full range of motion, trusting that the deep core is there to support you. 
and slowly, slowly lower yourself down, just like in Lagu Bhadrasana again. The momentum of this lowering down will take your knees off the mat, so push down into the feet, lift the knees up, and you will find that you have transitioned to a beautiful wheel pose. Urdhva Dhanirasana, one more time. And stay with the breath. To come out of wheel pose, back to kneeling. Walk the feet a little bit closer towards the hands. And take a deep exhale as you gently, gently bring the knees down to a kneeling position again. But stay with the strong legs to find the height of the hips. And then we are back in child's pose position. Resting the body. Connected with the effects of that beautiful intense sequence. Good. Please extend the legs forwards on the mat in front of you. And now we lie back. Lying back on the mat. As we start now to lift the legs upwards. Separate to find happy baby or Ananda Balasana. So with these legs wide apart, the knees are on the outside of the body and the feet stack over the knees. Pulling down gently with the arms to create an openness in your hip. So let's finish strong today. Extend both legs upwards in Viprita Karani, gentle inversion. On the exhale, keep your straight legs together and lower them down as close to the mat as you are able to maintain length in lower back. Inhale. As you elevate the legs, try to touch fingertips to toes. Exhale. Gently lower the legs down again. Again, inhale, rise up. Beautiful. Exhale as you lower down. Use your next inhalation to lift the head, neck, shoulders and chest off the mat to find low boat pose or Navasana. And again the legs are trying to lower down as low as they can go with the inhale. Next start to rock the hips up and over the shoulders to find plow pose or Halasana. Clasping the hands together behind the body just like what we did before to find the foundation of the shoulders. But take the option, if an inversion is not part of your practice today, for whatever reason, then stay on the mat with the legs elevated. To gain all the benefits of an inversion, you just need to lift the legs up in the air. Good, and then the option from Halasana, if you wish, you support the back with the hands and lift up your legs one at a time, both together. Stay with the foundation on triceps and shoulders. To find Saravangasana, shoulder stand. Please keep gaze at the big toes. Never turn the head left or right in this pose. As you maintain length in the spine, also consider hugging legs and arms inwards towards each other. As you reach upwards to your toes. And then on the exhale, one vertebrae at a time. We will lower down but have the hands underneath the hips. Once the legs are on the mat, inhale, lift yourself up to the forearms. And exhale, start to lift the chin, open the throat. Guide the crown of the head down to the mat behind you. To find Matsi Asana, fish pose. Stay with the foundation on the forearms and keep the elbows hugging close together underneath the body. And perhaps take the option if you wish for a little bit more core today. Legs elevated from the mat. Uttana Padasana. And stay strong while maintaining the upper body back bend and the strength of your hip flexors and core. Hold here. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Slowly release what you are doing. Bring the arms out from underneath the hips and spread the arms and legs comfortably wide with toes outwards and heels inwards, palms facing upwards and eyes gently closed. Shavasana. 
So thank you very, very much for joining today's practice. And keep practicing with joy in the body and peace in the heart. Namaste and see you soon.